in your introduction to circuits, you're going to eventually get to series versus parallel circuits. They're not super complicated, but they are different, and it's kind of confusing to keep them separate, but you need to keep them separate. And two things you need to know and need to remember throughout this entire time is the definitions of voltage and current. Voltage is the energy difference per coulomb between two points. Energy difference. A lot of times we can use voltage and energy almost as synonyms, or not quite, because it's energy per coulomb, energy difference per coulomb between two points. The reason why you connect a voltmeter like you connect it is because it's measuring the energy difference per coulomb between the two points you touch, and that voltmeter stays in parallel. And the current is the rate of flow of charge. That charge is flowing through a circuit. You're not losing charge, but you are converting energy. So you're kind of losing energy and you're kind of losing voltage, kind of. And the current continues to flow through that circuit. Uh, joules per coulomb for the, the fraction units for voltage and coulombs per second for the fraction units for current. The basics of series and parallel circuits. Let's learn physics. A series circuit, they're the, uh, they're the simple ones. And the voltage source, I'm going to use VT for the source. IT for the source of the current, the current coming out of the source. And the individual resistors are there. RT for the total resistance, the equivalent resistance of both of these circuits. Now, as you see, the current is the rate of flow of charge, and charge just starts flowing everywhere. So as soon as this connection is made, signal is sent and continues to be sent through this whole thing, which causes electrons to slowly drift in, well, in this direction. And we use current as the flow of positive charge. By definition, we're just using positive charge as the, that's just what we do. I sub T is the total current flowing out of the source, and so if you have the current flowing from the positive in this direction, we just want it to be consistent as a scientific community and for static electricity and for electric field and for potential and for potential difference and for current and for magnetism and everything that we do in electricity and magnetism, we prefer positive. So the you know, positive charge flows in that direction. It's not really flowing, but the current, current is flowing, current. It's what we call the conventional current. It's a convention for communication. We just use positive charge flow as current. So current flows in this direction. So you look at that and you're like, well, where else is the current going to go? The current that's flowing out of the battery is going to flow back into the battery and it's going to flow through the circuit. So we know first in series that the current is constant. So in series, the current is constant. We know that. Pretty simple. Uh, the resistance, well, it turns out that the resistance is a pretty simple relationship also. The total resistance of the whole circuit, the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit, is just a simple sum, R1 plus R2 plus R3. So you have R1 plus R2 plus R3, all those resistors, however many you have, if you have two or three or four or five or 17, whatever, you just add them up to get the total resistance. Resistance, of course, is in ohms. And the voltage, and this goes back to the definition and the fact that voltage is kind of energy. Energy per coulomb between two points. This voltage source supplies energy for each coulomb of charge. And so if you start here, this one coulomb of charge would be flowing in this direction. And it goes across the battery, or through the battery, and picks up whatever voltage that picked up. And then as it goes through here, this resistor, like a light bulb, would lose some of that energy. And then this one would lose some of that energy, and this one would lose some of that energy. And if this supplies 12 volts, then this would lose a portion of the 12, and that would lose a portion of the 12, and that would lose a portion of the 12. And you get the total being the sum. Anyway, the voltage source is equal to the voltage across the individual resistors. Conservation of energy concept, the total voltage, energy per coulomb supplied, is equal to the energy per coulomb used, lost, transformed in each of those as that one coulomb of charge passes around. Joules per coulomb, coulombs per second, right? Now parallel. These, uh, these wires, the wires here and the wires here, the connecting wires, do not have any resistance. There is no energy lost in any of these. There's no heat built up. There's nothing like that. Voltage is the energy difference per coulomb between two points. And so if you're measuring voltage here across the top, there isn't any energy difference. There's no energy loss up here. So this whole top end, all these wires up top, above 
the source and above each of these individual resistors is at a particular potential. And it's like uh, V1. And then down here, these are all at a different potential, V2, because there's no energy lost. And so if you measure the voltage from here to here, you get the voltage of the source, 12 volts. If you measure from here to here, you get 12 volts. If you measure from here to here, you get 12 volts. And here to here, you get 12 volts. It's always going to be the same. And so anything, any way you go from the top end to the bottom end, it's going to be the exact same thing. And one of those things in parallel, and you know this if you know anything about household electricity, 120 volts. Every outlet, 120 volts, everything's connected in parallel. In your car, pretty much everything is a 12 volt, not only a 12 volt system, and so uh, if you connect to anything in your, in your car, it's 12 volts. So 12 volts for everything in your car, 120 volts for everything in your house. And so the voltage difference across all these things, the delta V, or what we shorten to voltage, the V is constant. Voltage is constant. So the voltage here, and the voltage here, and the voltage here, all the same, and in this case, because it's a simple parallel circuit, the same as the voltage of the source. Now the current, current does something a little bit different. The current will flow here, some of it will go through the R1, some of it will go through R2, some of it will go through R3, but it splits. That current total, the rate of flow of charge, will split and then come back together. So at this point, some of it continues and some of it goes down there. And at this point, some of it continues and some of it goes down there. And so we have three different currents. There's a current flowing through one, there's a current flowing through two, and there's a current flowing through three. Of course, since you're not losing any current, the current flowing out of the source is going to be equal to the sum of the individual currents in, the, in those three branches. So the total current is equal to the sum of the individual currents. That's a simple one. One other note right here, that current is going to be I2 plus I3. And this current is also going to be the same. The I2 and the I3 continues through there and then splits into separate I2 and I3, comes back together, becomes I2 plus I3 again, and then I1 plus I2 plus I3 gives you the total current flowing back into the source. And con contrasting to that one where the same current flows through each, whichever one of these has the lowest resistance will draw the most current. And if it has a higher resistance, there will be less current drawn to it. And finally, the ridiculous relationship for resistance. Now this one, resistance increases as you add resistors, and it is just this simple relationship. A lot of times, math equations are just relationships we see in nature. This is what we see happening. It could be something different, but that's not how it actually works. Here, in this relationship, it's in order to get smaller resistance, because that's what actually happens. You add more resistors in parallel, you get a smaller resistance. You add more resistors in series, you get a larger resistance. In order to get this smaller resistance with more resistors, there's a different kind of equation. It turns out that the equation is the reciprocal. Okay, so the reciprocal of the total resistance is equal to the sum of the individual reciprocals. Complicated words, relatively simple equation. Total resistance, the reciprocal of that is the sum of the individual reciprocals. Now you look at this one, you're like, well, why can't I just flip them over and make it exactly into this? Well, I know that's not a possibility because this gives you a larger resistance, and this, adding more, has to give you a smaller resistance, so there, there's something wrong with that. Because algebra, you know, algebra rules, if you invert or reciprocate or something, you flip the left-hand side, you have to do the same thing to the entire right-hand side. So that equation, when you flip the left-hand side, you have to flip the entire right-hand side. So here it is copied again. Flip the left-hand side, take the reciprocal of that. You have to take the reciprocal of the entire side, not just each, in, each individual piece. And so the RT in the calculator version, this is the simple one, opening parentheses, whatever the value you have for the first one, x to the negative 1 button. Use that x to the negative 1 on the left-hand side of your calculator. Uh, plus r2 x to the negative 1 plus r3 x to the negative 1. And don't forget that this whole thing needs to be flipped another x to the negative 1 at the end. So that's how you do it in the calculator, the quick version to show this, because the resistance has to go down. Series versus parallel. Current is constant. And keep those definitions in mind. Voltage is constant. The voltage splits. 
the current splits, the resistance adds, and you have to, well, the resistance gets smaller, so you have to use the reciprocals. There you go. Keep those rules in mind and those definitions in mind. You'll be able to solve these problems a whole lot more easily. Check out my other videos on series and parallel circuits. More to come, too. Thanks for watching Learn Physics. And thanks for that thumbs up, too. Really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks. Subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday, and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics. You just learned physics.